guys! Alrighty, so I have been really trying to keep a couple days at least in between videos. If you couldn't tell, I've been kind of getting back in the groove of things and, and doing stuff and making some crafts and so it's been wonderful. And um, recently I posted pictures of my scrying mirror that I made and I had a couple people that asked me if I could do a video and they're super, super easy. And so I just kind of want to do a quick video on how to make your own scrying mirror. So what you're going to need is some black acrylic paint. Um, this I think was like $1.99. I got it at um, Joanne Fabrics. And then you'll need a... Um, not a brush with hair on it, but a paintbrush. Now, this one I think it was like $2.50. I spent a little bit more on paintbrushes because you really don't want to get one that's super cheap that's going, you're going to lose your hair or like the bristles when you're painting. So I went a little bit more on this, but get yourself a paintbrush and then you're going to, ooh, then you're going to drop shit. Um, then you're going to get yourself a um, picture frame. And the nice thing, this is where the fun comes when you're making a scrying mirror, is you can go as elaborate or as simple as you want with your picture frame. Um, this one I think was um, $7.99 at like Walmart and it's got the, the rod iron around it and I absolutely love it. Um, but I mean you can go like at Joann's I think for like $2 you could get picture frames that were just wood. It was just plain wood and you could decorate them yourself. You could paint them. You could put symbols on them. Um, you can go to craft stores like, um, you know, like Hobby Lobby or um, just like Meyer or Walmart and get really, really beautiful picture frames that are already all done up for you. I mean, you can do, you can spend as little or as much as you want. Hell, if you've got a picture frame at home, just like a little five by seven picture frame that use it. It's perfect. That's what this is, is five by seven. Um, you can also go as big or as small as you want. If you want a little teeny tiny one, you can do that. If you want a big old 8x10, you can do that. Whatever is going to work for you. I was choosing between the 5x7 and the 8x10, and I ended up going with the little bit smaller one just because um, I felt like it was, when I'm sitting here at my altar, it's the perfect size to use. So, what you're going to do is when you get your picture frame, you're going to take it apart. Um, so you're going to, however yours comes apart, it may have the little tabs, um, so mine actually pulls off the back, so take the back off, take off, mine's got little cardboard in it, ooh, I want to be careful because mine's actually already done, so I don't want to ruin it, um, okay, and then you're going to take out your glass, okay, so take out your glass, um, yours is going to be clear because mine's already done. But take out your glass and you're going to put it on some newspaper. Um, I did mine right here on the altar, but you know, paper, newspaper, just set it down. And then you're going to take your paint, put it in a little container. Um, I actually took just a little Tupperware dish and just put, um, uh, not wax paper, tin foil in it. And I just poured some of this in. And then you just go through and just do even brush strokes and cover your entire um, piece of glass. Wait about 20, mine took about 20 minutes to dry, but wait until it's completely dry. And then you're going to take it and you're going to hold it up to the light. If you can still see, which for the most part for your first coat, you will be able to still see light. If you can see light through it, then you're going to do your second coat. Mine took three full coats to completely cover so that when I held it up to the light, I didn't see any light through it. And that's what you want, is you want it to be completely black. So once it's all finished, now when I finished mine and I turned it over, there was some paint that got to the other side, to the glass side that I wasn't trying to paint. And you can very easily, once it's dry, take your fingernail and just peel it off um, because it's paint on glass and it peels off very easily. Just be careful that it doesn't wrap around and touch, you know, peel off the paint of the side that you've already painted. Um, you also want to be very careful because this is glass. You don't want to um, scratch this or drop it or anything because the paint will peel off and it's not good. You just spend all that time and now you have to redo it. Okay. So then you're going to put it back in your frame once it's completely dry. And you want the glass side, see how you've got the shiny side, and then the side that you painted, 
You want the side that you painted to be in, okay? So you want the shiny glass part that you did not paint to be facing out because that is your reflective surface for scrying. So you're gonna very, very freaking very carefully slide it back in and then put all your stuffy stuff back in there. I don't know why I'm keeping this in there. It's just as better homes, but it's fine. Put that back in and then put our top back on. Of course, now that I take it off, can't get it back on. Okay, perfect. So then you have a scrying mirror. Um, as you can tell, it didn't have fingerprints and then I went and took all the shit out and now it's got fingerprints. So just take some glass cleaner and clean it off and make it all nice and pretty and, or you can just take your shirt, you know, whatever. Um, but clean it all up and then you have a scrying mirror. Perfect. Now what a lot of people will do with these and, and how you use it really differs from which to which. Um, some people will take a candle and they will, um, of course when I need a lighter, I don't have a lighter. I had like 50 lighters on here. Okay, well, here it is. <laughs> I'm stuck with the hell. A witch without a freaking lighter on her altar. Um, some people will take a candle and will set it in front of the scrying mirror and then that candle reflects off of the surface and it creates another, um, another, I guess, it's the flame to look at, which can also change shape in the mirror. Um, a lot of people will actually turn it slightly. So right here I can see myself. They will turn it slightly so that they're not looking at themselves. Because if you're looking at yourself, you're going to focus on you. Whereas if you turn it, then you will just see... Um, and a lot of times people do this in the dark too, so they're not seeing as many reflective surfaces in the back. But if I turn it now, you know, I'm not, all I'm seeing is the white of my back wall. Um, and then, you know, if I set the candle just like this, then I just have the slight light of the candle and I see the slight flickering of the flame. And then you will stare and you will, you know, if you want to call in your circle, if you want to um, do some kind of a protection, um, ritual, whatever you want to do before you do so, because when you're scrying, you are essentially, um, you're using psychic abilities. You are, you could be contacting spirits, you could be doing all, all kinds of things. So if you want to take precautions beforehand, definitely do so. Um, and then you will stare and you will soften your gaze. So it's kind of like when you're looking at something and your eyes go out of focus, that's what you're looking to do. And some people, when you practice enough, um, what you're trying to get is you're trying to get some kind of matrix matrixing. You may see um, the reflective surface cloud over. You may see images. You may have images that pop into your mind. Um, you may get sounds. But that's the essentially what you're doing when you're scrying. Um, another thing that I did when I made this, just to add this in here because I forgot, is I took... Um, my amethyst chunk, my spirit quartz, and my owl totem. And I set them around my glass frame as I was painting because I wanted the amethyst to, or I wanted the frame and the glass to absorb the energy of amethyst for psychic abilities. I wanted it to absorb the um, energy of the spirit quartz for communicating with spirit. And I also wanted it to absorb the um, energy of the owl for its wisdom. So, um, Thursday is a full moon, so I'm going to, uh, either leave it in the window or if I can, uh, leave it somewhere outside to absorb the full moon energies, but that is how you make a scrying mirror. Super, super, super easy. You just paint some glass and put it in a picture frame and it can be as elaborate or as simple as you want. Um, you know, even if you, I was actually thinking about this for this one, taking like amethyst chips and gluing it to the outside of it to enhance that psychic ability. Um, you can take herbs and you can put herbs around it. I mean, you can, the sky's the limit with these, but they get done and they are absolutely beautiful and you have that reflective surface and you have that 
wonderful witch's tool. So I hope that you guys have a great day. I hope you have fun making your scrying mirrors. And if you do make some, I would love to see them on my Facebook, facebook.com slash piperpagan. So you guys have a great day and I'll see you later.